How do I know how many people are on? Um, we can see like a live number. I can let you know at the end if you want. But the stream has started. So Dia, if you want to go ahead and introduce Dr. Dorfman. Yes. Hi everyone, welcome to another Dental Shatterers virtual shattering session. Thank you for tuning in to our session today. My name is Dia and I'm part of the Dental Shatterers eBoard. I will be facilitating today's session with Dr. Bill Dorfman, a celebrity cosmetic dentist. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to meet with us, Dr. Dorfman. Whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, I'm super excited to be doing this for you guys. Now, I know from looking at past videos that you guys have on YouTube and stuff that there's this kind of format that you typically do. <laughs> I kind of think outside the box. And so I propose to these young ladies a completely different idea and they're like, okay, go for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a presentation that I typically give to dental students uh, all over the world. And I, I always preface this by saying this. When I went into dentistry, I had an idea of what my career was going to be like. My career has exceeded every expectation I ever had. And what I want to do with you guys is share some of the highlights and some of the lowlights of, you know, what went on so you can ultimately have the most successful career ever in dentistry. So I'm not here to brag or boast. I'm here to show you what I've done so you can do it better. We always say copy genius. When you copy me, know that I've already copied five or six or seven or eight other people. So you're getting the culmination of all this other genius added into whatever little bit I might have added to hopefully help you have the most amazing, fulfilling, rewarding, and successful career that you can have in dentistry. My mantra for life is this, learn so you can earn and then return. You know, the greatest part of being successful is not all the money you make, but all the great things that you can do in this world for other people too. And I, I, I wholeheartedly believe in that. So I'm going to share that with you. So just so you have a little bit of an idea of, of who I am and what I am, you know, they call me the extreme dentist. I'm a lecturer, entertainer, entrepreneur, family man, and best-selling author. Um, you know, I probably, you know, got most recognized back when I was on ABC's Extreme Makeover. Um, it was the very, very first reality TV show, um, big one. And, you know, this was a show where we, we found people that had horrible, horrible dental conditions and other things, and, and we fixed it. We changed it. Um, this is Deshante. She was a cleft palate patient. Um, we ended up doing um, a lip revision on her. We, uh, we made a bridge. We did some veneers. We straightened things out. Um, this was her submission picture. And this was a beautiful, beautiful woman in her 20s who had never, ever kissed anybody in her life because of her lack of self-confidence. And I can proudly say um, that this is Deshante four years after we did her makeover. This was her the day we finished her makeover. And within three months, she was married and, and, and had a completely new life. And um, doing that kind of dentistry is really what, what fired me up and, and got me excited to go to work every day. Uh, Deshante shared this with me. She said, it's differently. It, it's amazing how differently people treat you when you fit into their idea of beauty. It's a bittersweet thing. I've always been this person. However, few people took the time to get to know me. Now, people that wouldn't even make eye contact with me have so much to say. You know, you'd like to think we live in a world where people don't judge a book by its cover, but that's not the world we live in. And sometimes people need a little help, you know, for, for their confidence. 
Um, this is another patient. This is a young man in his 20s uh, who grew up in the South. Uh, he, had, he drank like two six packs of Coke a day and never brushed his teeth. Why? Because they bled. Um, we taught him new you know, techniques for oral hygiene. We cleaned up his mouth. We fixed all the decay. We ended up doing eight upper porcelain veneers for him and literally changed his life and taught him how to lead a normal life and have, you know, good oral hygiene. And so, you know, this wasn't all about cosmetics. This was really, he was on the road to losing all his teeth. Uh, this is another woman. She had a bilateral cleft palate. Um, you know, and I told her in order to repair her dental problem, I needed to take out her two front teeth. And she said, Dr. Bill, I, I don't want to lose those teeth. And I said, well, when you push on one, the other one also moved. The whole anterior segment of her mouth was, was not even attached because of this bilateral cleft palate. I said, please, you, you need to let me take your teeth out. And, and then I can fix this. And she said, no, I, I really don't. I, you know, I've had root canals and this and that and the other thing. And I want to, you know, just see how long they last. I said, look, they might not even last to my elevator. I said, let me take them out. So she finally acquiesced and did. And I will honestly say this is probably the biggest dental makeover in the history of dental makeovers. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Check this out. Wow. She went from this to this in two months. I'm not going to lie. Her husband fainted when he saw her. We actually had to give him CPR at her reveal, you know? <laughs> And, and I said to her, I said, you are so beautiful. She said, you know what, Dr. Bill, the only thing I wanted out of this, the only thing was to be able to walk into a room and feel normal. She said, I've never had that feeling in my life. And, you know, that was, you know, that was amazing. Nicole, are you still here? Um, this is a, another patient who came in, she did not like her crowns and the thing she didn't like most was, was her gums, you know, the way that her gums looked, um, around her old crowns. And, you know, my goal is to give somebody a natural result, a natural smile. So what we did was we replaced those crowns with new crowns whitened her teeth up and look how beautiful and natural this looks and how, you know, reshaping the gums really made a huge, huge difference for her. This is an interesting case. This is a young lady who came to me. She was the new guest girl. She got, you know, got a huge contract with guests and you would look at this and say, ah, oh, her teeth aren't that bad. They're not, you know, but for what she wanted, I, I understood. And so what we ended up doing was doing four porcelain veneers and zoom whitening. And we were able to transform her smile from this to this, which is exactly what she wanted and gave her this. Um, I need to grab my other um, iPad. Hold on one second. Sorry, I thought my assistant was here while I was doing this, and she wasn't. That's okay. So that's okay. Um, I need to quickly answer somebody on something really urgent. I'm getting all these messages. No worries. Um, thank you for your patience. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, as a lecturer and an entertainer, I have had so much fun. Um, before the pandemic, I actually got to go to Poland, um, which was cool because my grandmother was from Poland and I had never been. And I spoke to 1,000 Polish dental students in Poznan, which was amazing. 
Um, you know, and then I, you know, I told you a little bit about Extreme Makeover. Well, after Extreme Makeover went off the air, I went on another show on CBS called The Doctors. But I've been on Oprah and Rosie, The View, uh, Larry King Live. I mean, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, I invented Zoom. <laughs> Not Zoom video conferencing, but Zoom tooth whitening. I, I wish I had invented the other Zoom, but uh, it was still a good invention. And uh, we grew Discus Dental into the largest tooth whitening company in the world from zero to $1.3 billion in sales, which was amazing. And then we sold it to Philips. Uh, I also started my own podcast. Um, you know, uh, I'll talk a little bit about my LEAP Foundation. LEAP is a motivational leadership program that we do for high school and college students. Uh, we do this every year at UCLA. This year it happened to be virtual, but you can get more information on LEAP at www.leapfoundation.com. And I'll talk a little bit more about LEAP at the end. But the thing that's been so cool about LEAP is the community um, support that we've gotten has been phenomenal. I mean, I, I've had speakers like Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Hopkins, Eva Longoria, Kathy Bates, Paula Abdul, Usher, Michael Strahan, Apollo Ono, the most decorated winter Olympian in history. I mean, on and on and on. And it's a program where we literally teach students 15 to 25 skills to be successful in life. So if you have friends or brothers or sisters or no students that, that could tell them, we will always do the program virtually for sure. And hopefully with a vaccine coming out and I've been vaccinated. So I'm super happy about that. We will be able to do the program uh, live again this year. But all of these great mentors that I've interviewed have been very, very transparent about their lives and their struggles and all that. And they're on my Meet the Mentor podcast. So you can listen to Marky Mark talk about when he was a hoodlum, you know, which he was, you know. Hopkins battled alcohol and is a very, very vocal advocate for AA. Um, and all of this is on the Meet the Mentor. So please uh, download it and listen to what these amazing mentors have gone through in their life. You know, one of the things that young people do, and I always think it's, it's sad, is we compare our deepest, darkest insides to everybody else's bright, sunny outside. Well, guess what? We, we all have deep, dark insides. So, you know, listening to other people overcome problems, I think, is really beneficial. Um, I'm still an entrepreneur. I, I started up a whitening product called Mobile White. Uh, we launched it with a company called FabFitFun. I don't know if you know it, um, but they put out a box to about a million women every uh, quarter with all kinds of new products in it. And so we were just in the last winter box. Um, it was awesome. Um, I have two big products coming out this year. Uh, one is called Poof. So just keep your eyes open for it when Poof comes out. I'm not going to say anything more about it. It's pretty cool, but it, it will be exciting. The other one is this. When I owned Discus Dental, we had a product called Breatharex gumballs. And these gumballs were unique because they were... Um, they they were flavored. They fought bad breath. They also fought tooth decay. They had no sugar in them. And they were really great gumballs. Um, I love them. I chew them all the time. Now, I hate coffee. Hate it. I hate the taste. I hate the aftertaste. And I hate the fact that it makes your teeth dark. So I never drink coffee, but I sometimes feel like I need a little bit of caffeine. So what I used to do is take one of these gumballs with a no dose. No dose is just 200 milligrams of caffeine. It's the same as a cup of coffee. And it actually kind of gave me a little bit of a buzz and got me going. I used it as a pre workout and all kinds of stuff. So I trademarked the name Buzz Balls. So Buzz Balls are coming. So keep your <laughs> eyes peeled. They'll be out this year along with Poof. And I won't tell you what Poof is. You're just going to have to look for it. <laughs> I'm also a family man. Um, these are my three girls. Uh, we, every year we do an epic Christmas card, and I thought, how better to uh, illustrate 2020 than to do a masked 
Christmas card, but this is what they actually look like. Uh, the two on the ends are actually twins, obviously not identical. They're 23 and my oldest daughter, Anna, is 28. And I'm a best-selling author. Um, I wrote a book and called Billion Dollar Smile. It started off as Million Dollar Smile. And then we bumped it up a notch and made a billion dollar smile. But my goal was not to write a book. My goal was to write a New York Times bestseller. So what I did is I did some research and I found a company called Promote a Book. We told them about the book. And I said, look, I'm only going to do this if I have the chance of becoming a New York Times bestseller. Now, at the time I wrote the book, the algorithm dictated that in order to become a New York Times bestseller, you needed to sell 20,000 copies of the book in the first two weeks it, it released. Mm -hmm. And I sat back and I thought about it. I thought, well, wait, Discus Dental ships whitening product to 100,000 dentists every month. We ranked our dentists A, B, C, D, and F. Our A and B dentists, our best dentists were 20,000 dentists. So I said to this gentleman, I said, well, what if I bought the book for 20,000 dentists as a gift and gave it to them? Would that qualify? He said, as long as you do it at full price, yes. Now you can't do that today, but back then you could. So what I did is I bought 20,000 books. I gave them to our A and B customers. I thanked them for being loyal customers. And I told them that all the proceeds from the book would go to children's charities. So they in turn bought another 20 to 40,000 books and I became an overnight bestseller. And it was awesome. The reason I wanted to be a New York Times bestseller is because being an author, eh, anybody could do that. But when you're a New York Times bestseller, I knew I could book all these talk shows you know, like the Tonight Show and this show and that show. So it was really, really cool and a lot of fun. And again, all the proceeds went back to kids. So it, it was an amazing experience. It wasn't a win-win. It was a win-win-win. <laughs> um, I've also had some really amazing experiences in my life. We did a lot of work with Operation Smile. I got an award from them. That's the foundation that that goes around the world and repairs cleft, lip for, cleft lips for kids. Uh, last, uh, well, now it's, it's almost two years ago, I was knighted. So I am now Sir William Michael Dorfman, which was a really amazing experience. Um, and um, I was knighted in uh, Finland. Uh, I went there for that ceremony. Um, and one of the things that we do at LEAP is we teach something we call 10 culture. And kids that come to LEAP, we give them these little pop sockets that they could put on their phone with a 10 on it. What's the big deal about a 10? Well, what I do the very first day of LEAP is I look out in the audience and I say to all the students, okay, when you woke up this morning, whether you thought you did this or not, you put a number on your head. One's the lowest, ten's the highest. I can't see you guys out there, but just play along with me. How many of you did not put a 10 on your head this morning? Raise your hand up if you didn't put a 10. Okay. Now, here's my next question. Who picked the number? You. Did you have to take a test? No. Did you have to do anything? No. Is there anybody that would stop you from putting a 10 on your head? No. Erase it and put a 10 on there. And now what I want you to do is to go through life and try to be a 10 all the time. Walk like a 10, talk like a 10, act like a 10. But most importantly, and this is the hardest thing, surround yourself with other 10. A lot of you have friends that are twos and you know it. If you're trying to be a 10 and you're surrounded by twos, you will never, ever be a 10. And I'll tell you something that was crazy. We grew Discus Dental from nothing, literally nothing. I was not a wealthy man. I grew up really with no money. We were poor. 
And we grew this company with blood, sweat, and tears. And we got to a point where we did $1.3 billion in sales. We sold the company to Philips. Philips had one dental product in their whole product line. It was the Sonicare toothbrush. They wanted to go from retail to in office. And so our product, Zoom, was only sold to dentists. So they figured they could double their footprint by being in retail and in the professional space by, by owning our company. We sold, we worked on this for a year. We ended up selling the company on 10, 10, 10 at 10 a.m. October 10th, 2010. At 9 a.m., the merger documents came into my office. I waited till exactly 10 a.m. and signed it so I could tell kids at LEAP that Dr. Bill had a perfect 10 day. So we sold discus on 10, 10, 10 at 10 a.m. And I'm going to tell you, it was, besides the birth of my kids, probably the happiest day of my life. <laughs> it, I always knew as a dentist that I'd make a good living and I'd be comfortable I never, ever in my wildest dreams imagined it would be this good. And for people who tell you money doesn't matter, they're wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, it's not true. Now, does money buy happiness? No. Does money make your life perfect? No. But I will tell you this. It's pretty hard to be happy and comfortable when you are broke ass poor like I was my whole life, you know? And the best thing about having money to me is it gives you the ability to help other people too, which I think is, is why we're here, you know? I mean, if you leave this earth without having made it better, shame on you, you know? And it's so funny because I treat some of the biggest celebrities in the world and some of them are so incredibly philanthropic and some are so selfish and I just don't get it. I just don't. And it's not for me to judge. I'm just saying, you know, like I said, you know, earn, learn so you can earn and then return. And I think you'll have the most fulfilling life ever. And I always tell young dentists this too. Even if you aren't wealthy, even if you can't afford to give back hundreds or thousands or whatever dollars, take one patient. One patient a year, go to the battered women's shelter or go someplace where somebody really needs dental work that's appreciative. Treat that patient for free. If every dentist in the world did that for just one patient a year, it'd be a huge impact. And you can do that, you know? So give what you can when you can. And for me, this is what a perfect 10 day looks like. I mean, I love being outside. I water ski. I snow ski. I'm really, I'll tell you something. Dentistry made me a fitness buff. When I started doing dentistry, I had all kinds of problems, my back, my neck, everything. And I realized that the more I exercised, the more I worked out, the better I felt. And I've been a real fitness buff. In fact, right at the beginning of this pandemic, I did a layout for GQ magazine. I think I'm the oldest guy in GQ magazine shirtless. Um, mm -hmm. It was hilarious. And I'm a dentist. I'm not like a fitness person. I'm actually a dentist with an actual real job who just stays in great shape. So, um, so why dentistry? Well, you know, when I was a little kid, I fell down and I, I literally knocked out all my, my anterior baby teeth. And instead of, you know, being scared, you know, I, I, I had all these dental visits and surgeries where, you know, they worked to correct, you know, the problems so that my permanent teeth would be normal and healthy. And I, I just, I wasn't scared. We had a good dentist and I, I just became very um, enthralled with the whole process. And I thought, you know, this is helping me so much. I want to help people when I grow up one day. So I grew up in Granada Hills in the Valley. I'm in Los Angeles right now in Century City. And um, I was one of five kids. I'm the tall one in the back with buck teeth. And, um, and I was very fortunate. I had some amazing mentors in my life. Um, we lost Jeff um, a few years back, but um, he was an amazing dentist. He was 
really a master at PR and cosmetic dentistry. He's a past president of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. But what is a mentor? A mentor is someone with success or knowledge who's willing to share that with you. And he did and gave me so much. My career would never, ever, ever have been the same with, without his guidance and influence. And I really encourage you all to find great mentors that can help you. And you know, one mentor won't help you in all areas of your life. You know, he helped me in one area. You know, this is, these are my parents and, and my parents are, uh, I've been probably the most blessed person I know. My parents are so loving and supportive and, um, you know, they were incredibly instrumental in my success. You know, my dad worked for me for the last 20 years of his life. My dad was not like a big businessman. My dad was a real scholar. He loved reading and, and doing crossword puzzles and things like that. And as Discus became more and more successful, I asked my dad to work for us. My dad actually spent the last 20 years of his working career working at my company. And, um, you know, my parents have been invaluable in my life. Um, you know, I think the greatest gift that any parent can give their kid is confidence. You know, you can buy them a car, you can buy them a watch, you can, but the greatest, greatest gift my parents gave me was confidence, a confidence to believe in myself and know that I could do what I wanted to do. And that was really invaluable. Um, my grandfather was an amazing businessman and he was a great mentor to me in, you know, in business and all that. As a father, not great. He was not a great family man. So, you know, I didn't get that part from him. But what I did get from him as a grandfather, he was amazing and loving and supportive. And he gave me a lot of great, you know, business knowledge. I always wanted to go to UCLA. Um, that was a childhood dream of mine. And I did. When I graduated UCLA, um, I went on to dental school. One of the acronyms that I believe in, and this is literally the first thing I say to myself every single morning when I wake up is when. And what's when? When is an acronym for what's important now. And I think it's so incredibly important to really prioritize things in life and decide what's important and what isn't important. And not just when you wake up in the morning, but during the day, you know, things happen and you get inundated with this or inundated with that. And, you know, and, and, and sometimes you just have to stop and say, okay, what's important right now? What do I need to do right now in this moment to get me to the next moment? And if you can really sit down and isolate that and focus on that, you will be so much more successful than just getting completely inundated with everything. I went to University of the Pacific Dental School. I had a great experience there. For any of you who ever visit UOP Dental School or actually get into UOP Dental School and attend, um, when you walk in on the first floor, the main auditorium there is actually named after me. Um, the dental school called me and um, asked me if I would help them uh, build the new school. And I said, as long as I can sell my company and I have money to do it, I will. And I did. Um, immediately after dental school, uh, I went and I did a residency program in Lausanne, Switzerland. That's the real Matterhorn, not the Disneyland one in the background there. Um, and it was an amazing experience. And uh, one of the things I will tell you, <clears throat> I never take no for an answer. Uh, when I applied to this residency program in Switzerland, there were 400 applicants for one job. There's no way in the world that they were going to hire me. Uh, I had no experience. I didn't speak French. And um, yeah, I mean, why should they? So what I did was I had every instructor I was friends with in dental school write a great letter. And by the way, the best way to get a great letter of recommendation is to ask for it and then offer to write it. So mm -hmm. I know they were great letters because I wrote them all, <laughs> you know, they'll do, they just personalize it. Uh, then I started calling the director every week. And back then in 19, you know, 83, it wasn't that easy to make 
a long distance phone call, but I called every week. And eventually um, I realized I was not going to get hired at all. And, you know, I, I had this thing I call life defining moments. And I just had one. And sometimes you plan them, sometimes you don't. And I didn't plan this. But right in the middle of the phone conversation, I said to the director, can I take you to lunch? He's like, lunch? You're in San Francisco. I'm in Lausanne, Switzerland. I'm like, I know, but I'll fly there, which was even funnier because I was broke. I had no money. But he said, yes. Um, I figured out a way to borrow money. I bought a ticket. I flew out there. He met me and he hired me. And of the 400 applicants, guess how many took him to lunch? One. <laughs> One. That's right. And guess who got the job? And that really changed the trajectory of my life. I mean, I got to live in Europe, learn new culture. Uh, je peux parler français maintenant, avant je peux pas parler. Um, I, I'm completely fluent in French. Uh, I mean, it, it was the greatest experience of my life. So, you know, take great opportunities when you can. Um, my friend Sean Astin is the actor. Um, oh, whoops, I just did something. Hold on. I, uh, hold on a sec. I just did something weird with my phone. <laughs> Hang on. Um, uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Sean Astin was the actor in Lord of the Rings. And um, we, we became very close friends. And he gave me this card, and I love it. It says, not only do you have weird ideas, you carry them out. And it's so mm -hmm. true. I do. You know, so many people think, oh, my gosh, you know, what if you could do this? What, like, if I really believe in something, I just do it, you know? And I really encourage you to do that as well. Um, so back around... 1989, I started doing cosmetic dentistry and I had this idea that there should be a book, The Smile Guide. You know, patients come in and they want to have cosmetic dentistry done, but they don't know how to really tell me what they want their teeth look like. So I came up with a whole way to, to categorize teeth by different smile styles. I had pictures and line drawings and whatnot. And this book is still in use. Um, all over the world. And it's been really phenomenal. And in fact, there's a small version of it in my, um, in, in my book, Billion Dollar Smile. When we started Discus Dental, again, one of the things I'm a big believer in is copy genius. I started looking at different ads that were in magazines at the time. And I thought, oh, I love this. It's, it's multicultural. It's young. It's fresh. It's clean. So, you know, this was uh, Benetton we went ahead and we did something very similar. In fact, a woman on the lower with blonde hair is Stacy Haley. We've been friends since UCLA and I just saw her yesterday. Um, and so we used this, uh, this image for our very first ads. Discus Dental Group, um, this was our, um, our company's warehouse. It was over 200,000 square feet in Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, this is all product on the wall on your left side here that will be sold within a week. I mean, it's crazy how much product we moved. I mean, we got to a point where, you know, we were busting at the seams. Um, we were the first company to really in, instill a sense of style and fashion into, you know, dentistry. Um, this uh, Second, yeah, let's see if I can make this happen. Um, we were the first company to instill a sense of fashion and style into, into dentistry. You know, prior to us, all the other dental products on the market um, were very medical looking and we gave it like that little flair of, of fashion and style and glamour that you just didn't see in the dental world before. You know, we blew up the market with Zoom. You know, prior to Extreme Makeover, our company grew. We grew 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, 16 million, blah, 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 blah. 
and we kind of plateaued at 76 million. The year I got on Extreme Makeover, we had just launched Zoom. We jumped from 76 million to 101. The next year on Extreme Makeover, we were able to go up to 136. And the third year we were on the show, we almost hit $200 million in sales, mainly with Zoom. And I got to do all these great shows, you know, Oprah, Larry King Live, The View, um, on and on and on. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, here I am in Larry King's studio. And that day, three of the world's biggest leaders were there. And I'm sitting here pinching myself saying, I'm just the dentist. This is crazy, crazy. You know, um, Albert Einstein said something I love. He says, it's not my brilliance that made me successful. It's my creativity. In 1921, when he got his first Nobel Prize and he was being lauded for his brilliance, he said, it's not my brilliance. It's my creativity. I am not the smartest person you'll ever meet by a long stretch, but you put me in a room with creative people and I'm totally in my element. And that's where I really thrive. You know, so we all have our own, you know, gifts, you know, try and find those and, and really, you know, capitalize on them. And I'll tell you something else. I never fail ever, ever. Why? Because if I try something and it doesn't come out the way I want it to, that's not failure. That's practice. And then I'll do it again and again and again if I have to until I get it right. You only really fail when you quit. Don't quit and you won't fail. And, you know, one of the common phrases that we've all heard is practice makes what? Perfect, right? <laughs> Sorry. Wrong. Practice makes permanent. If you keep practicing the wrong way, you'll get really good at doing it wrong. So when you find that you're doing something and it's not the right way, don't keep doing it wrong. Find a mentor, find an educator, find somebody that can really teach you how to do it right. Let me tell you something about Lee. You know, if there's two things, if there's two things that I want students to walk away from after going to leap, it's this. Number one, don't wait for opportunities in life, make them. You know, if you think the universe is out there taking care of you, think again. The universe has to deal with Donald Trump. It has enough to do. It's not going to take care of you. And number two, when you do get an opportunity in life, don't take it, master it. And there's a big difference. When ABC put me on Extreme Makeover, I stunk. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was horrid. I mean, horrible, horrible. They should have fired me. I, I mean, I, it's a miracle they didn't. You know, dentistry, yeah, I, I, I got that. TV, no. <laughs> I was not good. It was painful to watch myself. I'm on national TV and I looked like a deer in headlights. I was horrible, but I was also smart enough to know how bad I was. So instead of stinking or getting fired, I did something proactive. I took acting classes, hosting classes, teleprompting classes. I worked with a media trainer. You know, I learned how to be the best version of me that I could be on TV. I hired the woman who worked with all the kids on American Idol. And she sat me down in mock interviews with real interviewers to teach me how to interview and how to talk and where to look and how to sit and what to wear, all that stuff. And little by little, I got better and better and better at what I was doing. You know, my goal was not to be a TV star. I had no desire. I just want to be the best version of me I could be. And it worked. I mean, we almost hit $200 million in sales. It, back then, reality TV didn't have all the restrictions it had. Today, you could never promote Zoom. You know, I had to deal with ABC. I do the dentistry for free if they would let me talk about Zoom on every episode. They said yes. They thought it was a great deal for them. Well, it was a great deal for them and for me. So it, it just worked out. Again, another life-defining moment. 
And probably the thing I excel at most is stubbornness. I win. <laughs> you, and payback is a bitch because my kids learn this too. And there'll be times when I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh. And I'm actually kind of proud of them in a way. You know, like my kids are not pushovers. They're going to get what they want. And I, and I like that. And when you go, go big. Don't do things half-ass. If you're going to go, go big or just don't go. The key to success is tenacity. It really is. You have to be tenacious. And you know, kids all the time always say, Dr. Bill, Dr. Bill, what's the real secret of success? You wanna know what the secret is? It's not a secret. It's called work your butt off and find a way to add more value to people's lives than anybody else does. Work hard. I don't know a single successful person that doesn't work hard. I, I mean, I feel like people are looking for a pill that they could take that's just going to give them like instant success. It doesn't work that way. You need to work really, really hard. Lessons I've learned about my my uh, about marketing my dental practice, and these I know some of this is premature for those of you that aren't even in dentistry yet. But just take notes, and you're welcome to take screenshots too, and, and keep some of this. You know, create the wow experience. Disney said it like this. Do what you do so well that people can't resist telling other people about you. You know, when you go to Disneyland, they try to create as perfect an experience for you as they can. All the maintenance is done at night. You never see maintenance crews at Disneyland. All the painting is done at night. You never see painters at Disneyland. You know, when Mickey wants to have a cigarette, he doesn't take his head off, sit on the pinch bark and, 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 you know, and, and start smoking. It's all backstage. Everything you see is a show. Your dental office has to be that way too. I tell my employees, look, if you have an alter, if you need, don't ever do this in the front office. You go in the back, you work it out, and then you come back up. My patients are my customers, and I don't ever want them to see that. So how do you create the wow experience? You keep your office clean, um, uncluttered, and modern looking. You can't sell state-of-the-art cosmetic dentistry in a rundown looking office. You know, call your patients at home. That is probably the best advice I can give any dentist or pre-dental student. I started in dental school. When I finish my last patient and I walk out the door, within a minute or two, my office manager has all my patients' names and phone numbers plugged into my phone in a text message. And just as I'm driving home, I call each one, you know, how you feeling, how your teeth feel, you know, does your wife like the way they look, whatever it is, you know, call your patients at home. I had this, this elderly guy, Joe, he was like 90 and uh, he had three teeth and we took one out. And that evening I called him and uh, he picks up the phone. I said, hello, is Joe there? He goes, yeah, this is Joe. Who's this? So it's Dr. Bill. He goes, Dr. Bill, why are you calling me? I said, well, you know, I, I, I took your tooth out today and I just want to know how you're doing. He goes, are you kidding? He said, last month they took my kidney out. Nobody called. <laughs> Call your patients. Patients know how much you care. They might not care how much you know, but they know how much you care. Uh, never send your patients home empty-handed. Give them things. Hire the best staff you can. Empower your staff. Take their good advice. And try and keep the atmosphere in your office cheery and be nice. You know, and pamper your patients. You know, um, this is Diane. We give her a blanket. We give her headsets. We give her goggles. She can watch TV if she wants. I actually took the TVs out because patients would relax so much they just go to sleep. So we actually don't have TVs anymore. But for a while, it was super popular and every dental office had them. So I had them. We took them all out. Why cosmetic dentistry? Well, three out of four Americans believe an unattractive smile hinders their career success. And only half of all adults are satisfied with their smile. So it's a huge market. Still is. You know, and how do you get patients? All of these different things are referrals for you. You know, hair salons, physicians, beauty pageants. I am, I judge beauty pageants every year. Miss USA pageant. I'm, I'm there every year. I judge one of the states and I've met a lot of amazing young women in this. Uh, I, I wasn't really sold on in the beginning, 
But when I saw how a lot of them use this as a springboard for their careers and everything, I am. And so I do it. Make a facility that's unique. This is my, my dental office. Uh, we, we, you know, the, I've been in this office over 20 years and it still looks new and modern. We use a lot of wood and marble. Um, the only pictures you see in my office are smiling faces. Why? I don't sell sailboats. Why would you put up pictures of sailboats? That doesn't help your business. Put up smiling faces. Um, <laughs> we did the... Uh, the uh the 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 big challenge and so you you can see this on youtube i'm not going to take time to play it um website tips your website has to be rich in um in social media icons you should have a current copyright year incorporate blogs into your website use only high quality images make sure you check your grammar and spelling if it's bad it hurts your seo and use Google Translator. It's free and it will translate your whole website into any language the patient selects. Also take a picture of this slide. This is a really, really helpful slide. As you're designing your website, think about color. Every color you pick emotes a different kind of emotion. You know, do you want, you know, that's why you'll never see a dental website with red. I mean, passion, love, romance, danger. And that's not something you'll see on the dental website. Usually you'll see grays, you'll see blues and greens, purple royalty, things like that. So just really try and think about what colors you're using, what images you're using, and what's the message that you're trying to get out. You know, this is my website. Um, if you click on my website, I just added a new thing this week that's super cool. It actually is a live chat feature. So you can chat live through writing with um, somebody and answer questions. So yeah, click on my website and check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, on my website, you first see a picture of me, um, some of the things that you know are special about me and my office. These are some of the celebrities that we treat in our practice. Uh, then we talk about our services. Um, definitely have a great gallery of before and after pictures, make sure they're really well quality, uh, good quality. Um, we have actually, um, oh, this is an old slide. I have almost 2000 five-star Google reviews now and a, a, a lot more Yelp reviews. Um, I, I, have, um, I have over a million followers on, on Instagram. You know, a lot of dental students say, well, should I really start my Instagram now? Absolutely. You know, and you should follow me, not because I need followers, follow me because I'm following a lot of other dentists that have really robust Instagram pages. So by copying me, you're copying the genius of a lot of the people who I'm copying. So, so follow me and you'll learn some cool stuff that I learn as well. Um, I put my Instagram feed on my website as well. Uh, and I've been very active with a lot of different charities. Uh, Leap, I've talked about it a little bit. Tomorrow Trust is an organization in South Africa that helps um, kids um, get educated and with dental care. And Smiles for Life is a foundation we did with Garth Brooks where we raised actually $44 million dollars for children's charities. Um, Henry Ford said, a business that makes nothing but money is a poor kind of business. And I agree 100%. Um, I have two Guinness World Book records. Um, my first was for shaving my head for charity. I pledged to shave my head for this charity. I thought, you know, I might as well do it on TV and make even more money. So the doctors allowed me to do it on TV. It was pretty funny. And we've raised, like I said, $44 million in the last 20 years through Smiles for Life with country singer Garth Brooks. We also built a, a dental clinic in the Dominican Republic. That's my daughter, Charlie, on the left with some of the kids that we treat. This is the Dorfman Hall. So when you go to University of the Pacific and you walk in, it's my auditorium, baby. <laughs> uh, we've also been very active with Megen Davida Dome. It's the blood bank for Israel, the thing that really makes this unique and different is that they will give blood to 
anybody who needs it. Um, Jews, Arabs, you name it. If you need blood, they will give it to you. Uh, Jay Leno, um, this is my dear friend, Tracy, um, who was with me the night I got an award from Jay Leno for the money we raised from again, Davida Dome. I'm also active with Wild Aid. Um, this is one of my favorite pictures. I was um, diving with whale sharks. Um, it was so cool. But um, we've raised a lot of money um, for nature and to help preserve nature. One of the things that you should really start thinking about as a student and a dental student is a hundred year lifestyle. This is a course I teach at LEAP on just health and fitness. You can't be a dentist if you're out of shape and not healthy. Dentistry is one of the most strenuous things between your eyes and your back and your neck and your arms. And I've become a real big fitness buff. Um, you have to remember that what you do today will make you what you are tomorrow. And you have to plan physically, financially, and emotionally for life. And, you know, you're only have, going to have a short period of time when you can actually work and, rate and make money. Um, this is me. Um, I did a photo shoot for a, a health magazine. This is on the cover of that magazine. Um, I did another one for World Class, which was kind of cool and fun. And then I just got featured in GQ. This was right at the beginning of the um, pandemic. I, I did a layout on fitness for men over the age of 50. I'm actually 62 right now. And um, you're supposed to say, wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so I did a, a big layout for GQ. Um, it was in the UK version on, on health and fitness and exercise. Um, I turned 60, yeah, two years ago. That was awesome. Um, and, you know, I, I said this earlier, but, you know, don't wait for opportunities in life. Make them. And when you get them, don't take them, master them. That has really been the key to my success. Um, you know, when Katy Perry asked me to make a grill for the Dark Horse video, her makeup artist, Johnny, called me. I said, what's my budget? He said, well, it's 1500 bucks. I'm like, are you kidding? I called my friend Cheryl, who owns 14 Carats. It's the largest jewelry store in the LA area. I got a on consignment over a million dollars in jewels, and I made her the million dollar grill by Dr. Bill. And after I did, I had my publicist called Guinness, and that was my second Guinness World Book record, um, the million dollar grill by Dr. Bill. And this has had billions, literally billions and billions of views on YouTube. I don't know if this will play. Let me see if I can make it play. Oh, it's going to play. Oh, but you don't have the sound. I have to, Yeah. I can't unmute it. You yeah. It is complicated. I had to mute bit. this because um, I was getting feedback from the computer to the iPhone, but uh, this was a segment um, I think on, on Access Hollywood, where they talked about the million dollar grill that I did for Katy Perry in the Dark Horse video. Um, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, there's Billy Bush. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. Yes. Um, Surround yourself with success. One of the other things that I always advocate is joining mastermind groups. Um, a mastermind group is a group of like-minded people that you meet with on a regular basis that really help support you and help you grow. I joined an organization called YPO, the Young Presidents Organization, years ago, where I was in a forum that met every month for four hours. And you talk about business and life and challenges and romance and divorce and all that kind of stuff. Um, so try to surround yourself with really good supportive people. Every morning you have two choices. You can continue to sleep with your dreams or you can wake up and chase them. Guess what I did? Chase them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, leap this year will be July 18th to the 24th. If you want more information, go to our website, www.leapfoundation.com. Um, this is our direct phone number. Uh, this is a little leap video. Again, it's not going to play because we can't do sound, but it's at UCLA. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, hopefully, 
uh, with the vaccine, we'll be able to actually do this live. We had a very successful program last year. We typically get about 400 students. Last year, we had over 1,000 because we did it virtually. So we'll do it again virtually and hopefully again in person. This is the mentor workshop. That's Mark Wahlberg speaking at LEAP. Um, it's, it's really an amazing experience. 99% of alumni say that LEAP helped prepare them for success. 98% said they're more motivated after attending LEAP. 91% are more confident and 100% leave with defined goals or vocational goals. Uh, some of our past speakers, Eric Garcetti, uh, the mayor of LA, Chris Paul, basketball player, Paul Abdul, you all know, Scott Hoying, who's in the group Pentatonics. Uh, here's me with, with Anthony Hopkins and Mark Wahlberg. Uh, more information on LEAP. And if you need to get a hold of me, um, that's my email address. Um, I'm not very active on anything except Instagram. I'm probably the only person with over a million followers who actually answers all of my DMs. So yeah. if you want to reach me, my preference is to do it on Instagram. It's super easy at Dr. Bill Dorfman, D-R-B-I-L Dorfman. Um, you can reach me there. Once you guys get your practices up and going, I'm going to show you a, a really great little um, trick that you can use, and I'll share it with you in a second. Um, as kids leave LEAP, I give them a little green card and it says this, I will remember what is important and that my goal should be to make the world a better place for me that having been here, I will show love, compassion and patience for those I contact every day, including myself. Each day I'll be thankful for all my blessings. I'll be addicted to helping others. I will maintain a sense of humor and wonder. I will share my heart, my time and my material possessions and remember that no thing is more important than people. I will maintain a sense of fun and adventure. I will constantly strive to improve myself in all facets of my life. One of the most important things that you can do once you start your practice is to get Google reviews. How do you get Google reviews? Just ask for them. You know, when patients leave our practice, we ask them, this is a QR code. Um, it's pretty easy. You just point your phone at this. I see you. Um, and you can do it for me too. If you point yeah. your phone at this, it will take you right to my website. And if you enjoyed what I said today, please give me five stars and say, I like listening to Dr. Bill. That'd be awesome. I didn't get paid for doing this. I did this for you guys to teach you. So this is one of the things I'm going to teach you that's super valuable no matter what business you're in, get Google reviews. Getting Google reviews puts you to the top of every search engine when people are looking and is incredibly valuable. So again, if you enjoyed my lecture today, please use this QR code or just go on Google, or Google Maps and write me a nice review. I'd really appreciate it. And I'm done. Yay. Thank you so much, Dr. Bill, for this awesome presentation. Krupa will now begin taking questions from the live stream chat. Yes, thank you again, Dr. Dorfman. Um, I'm going to start taking a few questions. So we had a lot of questions about asking for or finding a mentor. How do you recommend finding a mentor? Well, it depends on what you want the mentor for. I mean, I'll tell you one really quick, great way is go to LEAP because <laughs> We have something called a mentor workshop at the end of LEAP where I'll have a hundred different professionals from all walks of life sitting there that you can approach. Um, also join some organizations. The two that I really recommend, and you can join these even before you become a dentist. One is the AACD. It's the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. Um, it's super inexpensive to join as a student and you will be able to get some really great mentors there um, of dentists who volunteer to help mentor young students. The other is the Crown Council of Dentists. Go to crowncouncil.org and they actually have a great mentorship program there as well. Plus, they'll put you in mastermind groups with other students your age who can help you, you know, grow together. That's great advice. 
And let's see. Um, we had a few questions about pros and cons of being a cosmetic dentist versus a general dentist. You know, the thing about this, what floats your boat? Do you like endo? Do you like perio? Do you like pedo? I mean, the cool thing about being a dentist is you can do what you want. You know, when I was in dental school, I didn't get real excited about doing root canals. But when I was able to cosmetically enhance somebody's smile and make them feel good about themselves, that made me feel really great. Like I was doing something great. So that just ended up being my niche. And one viewer asks, what would you recommend a person who is in a field unrelated to dentistry and now planning to become a dentist? What do you recommend? What do you mean by what do I recommend? Like, how do you so, make that transition? Yeah, something like that. I mean, if you are not in dentistry and want to become a dentist, you have to do some research. You have to see, you know, what your... Um, you know, what classes you took in college, um, because in order to go to dental school, there's a, a specific set of classes that you need to take. So you may have to take a few more college courses in order to even apply. And then you have to take the DAT, the dental admissions test. Um, and you need to do well on both in order to get into dental school. But before you even do that, my best recommendation would be to spend some time in a dental office, shadowing a dentist, and really seeing if this is a career that, that you want to do. Very good point. And one person is asking, or they state, I find that your career in dentistry varies from any other I've ever seen. Did you ever expect that your career would go in this direction? I mean, like I said at the beginning of this, my career has exceeded every expectation I ever had. No, but I think a lot of the reason for my success is I just always kept an open mind. I always was looking for opportunities. And like I said earlier, instead of taking opportunities, I tried to master them. I tried to maximize them. You know, um, if you've ever watched like the tonight show or, 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 um, or, um, or Ellen or, or any of these shows where they interview people, the way that this happens is they bring you into the studio and they seat you in a little room and there'll be a producer there and they'll ask you questions for like an hour. And based on you know what you've talked about, they'll pick three or four things that they think their audience will relate to. And then when you go out on stage to do the live interview, they talk about those again. Oprah doesn't do that, you know? Um, when I had the opportunity to go to Oprah's studio, um, you know, they said to me, you know, Oprah said, Dr. Bill, you've had a career unlike any other dentist in history, like in the world. Like what incentivized you to think so far outside the box? Now, I had never heard that term. This was in 2005. And I looked at her and I said, what box? And I think that pretty much defines my entire career. I've never, ever put myself in any box or say, I can't do this because I'm a this or that. If I really felt strong about something, I just did. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Dorfman, for answering our questions. I think that's all the time we have left today for questions. So thank you again. All right. Thank you, guys. Yes. Um, I had a, one quick question before we end. The whale sharks that you swam with, where was that? Uh, that was on in Islam Ahadas. It's uh, by Cancun in Mexico. Oh, wow. that looks so cool. <laughs> it was so cool. Mm -hmm. It's on my bucket list for sure. <laughs> yeah. But um, thank you so much again, Dr. Bell, for joining us today. Your presentation was very informative. And we greatly appreciate your time and knowledge. And thank you for the viewers for joining in as well. And so the attendance quiz can be found in three places, the YouTube live stream chat, the group me chat, and then the link tree in our Instagram bio. And the quiz will remain open for 12 hours for those who weren't able to watch the session live. And thank you again. And I hope everyone has a great night. See you at our next session tomorrow. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>